With Metroid Prime 4 right around the corn. Oh, oh well. With Metroid Prime 4 right around the next decade, then, I thought it appropriate to have a little review of the evolution of Samus' animation, focusing on interesting details throughout her history. Nintendo have a diverse range of properties, from more cartoony games like Kirby and Zelda to more serious games like Star Fox and Zelda. With a harder edged, more serious, and long running sci fi series like Metroid, how have Nintendo kept Samus' animation fresh, unique, interesting, and consistent? Let's take a look. So, starting with Metroid in 1986, we're shown Samus is the type of character to always be alert and confident, to have her gun always at the ready, pointing forward. She runs with purpose, she's versatile and acrobatic. She is quite literally a woman on a mission, and there's always a sense of power and confidence in her moves, even as early as this in 1986. Metroid 2 gave much more detail by introducing the idea that Samus is right handed, or right gunned, by having a different sprite depending on which way she's facing. This affected all her actions, showing her gun when facing right and her hand when facing left. And you can clearly see now that she's holding her gun, steadying it, always poised to fight, feet on tiptoes, ready to push off and run. Another curious detail you might miss is the fact she has one frame during turning a different direction. Nothing much, but it's a start of understanding her form and figure. She has a number of new moves, such as being able to crouch, being able to shoot down when in the air, her missile hatch now opens when equipped. And the space jump kind of gives this smeary, speedy effect when somersaulting, something we'll see more of in future. Color limitation on the Game Boy forced designers to give suit upgrades a more visual difference, resulting in the iconic Vary suit, blah blah blah, but we all know that anyway. It seemed a more solid understanding of Samus's shape, presence, and abilities were being explored. Super Metroid was on a new powerful system, allowing sprite animation to be much more comprehensive, with Samus' run cycle, for example, inflating from a mere 3 frames to a whopping 10 frames. She still has this confident straight back that's been established, and running kind of results in this very determined bound, with arms fully pumping. She holds her gun a lot more looser now, kind of casually by her hip, and shooting still has no reaction from Samus. I mean, even Metroid had this tiny kickback from her cannon, but that's not the case here. Personally, I've always felt this to look a little odd. A tiny kickback would have done a lot to give the impression that her beam weapons were powerful, especially the rockets and missiles. What's also been carried over from Metroid 2 is the turning animation, this time on all actions. It's buffed up from one frame to three frames, and is beginning to build this much more comprehensive look of Samus' form as she moves. Her moveset is really versatile too. For instance, she has one animation for just jumping up and down, one for a somersault, one for going in to shoot when jumping, one for falling without doing anything, and she has a slight follow up animation for landing and jumping as well. Her morph ball now has a more definite design, like a woodlouse that's closed up, and there's also a tiny transitioning animation for going in and out of morph ball mode as well. She has a hanging animation moveset for use with the grapple beam, and not that you'll see it much, but she has a slight head turn when using the X ray scope. I mean, that's a vast amount of frames that have been thrown at a ton of moves that you'll barely notice, and they're all carving out a more cohesive character and yet have near zero impact on the actual gameplay. I mean, she has a breathing animation which gets more intense when she's lower on health for Ridley's sake. Okay, so before we get to the double hit of Metroid Prime and Metroid Fusion, let's cast a quick glance to Samus' single outing on the N64 in Super Smash Bros. This is her first 3D representation in games, and it's important to remember this is a fighting game and not an action platformer. 
her attacks are much more dynamic, varied, and more strategic. I mean, I have mixed feelings about the running and walking, but these aren't huge concerns when most of the time is spent punching, jumping, and fighting. The way she performs actions here fit the genre. She has proper powerful punches using her gun, and barely even uses her hand for anything apart from holding items, enforcing that her gun is everything when it comes to battle. Like, when she jumps, she always has her left shoulder forward, with the right arm further back, so if she needs to punch with her gun, she's already in that anticipating pose. However, if Samus had this animation for shooting in her mainline games, it definitely wouldn't feel right, and it would feel quite sluggish. And it's important to notice the difference in gaming language here. Generally, it seems as though it's all roughly based off Super Metroid, with floaty movement, gun by her hip, things like that, all the while adding to this acrobatic notion she's building in her main games. Ugh, foot's going to sleep. So, the next two big Metroid games came out eight years after Super, in the form of Metroid Prime and Metroid Fusion. Prime, the series' first proper 3D entry, takes us into the eyes of Samus herself, so we're treated to a whole new host of actions, movements, and animations. Before we discuss gameplay, let's quickly observe her cutscene animation that keeps the hard-edged serious aesthetic we've come to expect from the series so far, and takes it into the cinematic territory. Though we do get a slightly more candid glimpse at her actual character animation and personality. Nothing much, just a hint. Samus composes herself differently now. She no longer holds her gun, only steadying her aim with her left hand when the aiming button is pressed. She has a much beefier reaction to shooting now, such as kicking back when firing, shaking when charging, dipping when she lands, and her left arm jolting back when the grapple beam fires. The Prime games have much more emphasis on mechanical animation, such as her arm cannon shifting shapes when changing beam weapons. I love that Tron-like strip lighting that changed according to element, and that kind of glowing wipe effect, it's really cool and firing a missile, like usual, fully opens up the gun barrel, an aspect which is now official thanks to the visual changes made during Metroid 2. What I like is also this kind of reloading it has with the panels, like loading another missile into the barrel. Feels really satisfying. Morph Balling takes you into third person mode, and we see Samus physically roll down into a ball while she's encompassed by the Morph Ball enclosure itself. Also, you no longer spin on the spotlight previously, but instead roll around like a bowling ball. Interestingly, when coming out of Morph Ball mode, we see a brief animation of Samus running, depending on if she's rolling forward or still. If she comes out when moving, then she'll be running. And as we can feel when playing, Samus doesn't really run anymore. Not in the same way she used to, at least. It feels more like a brisk walk or a jog. If there was a run button, like there can be in other first-person games, you might expect her to lower her gun to enable that pumping of the arms for more speed, but that's not so here. And that's likely because this is less a first-person shooter and more a first-person adventure, with shooting. Which is why we no longer have any somersaulting going on. So we still get a sense that Samus is confident, but due to the style of gameplay, we no longer feel that she is as nimble or acrobatic as before, with these ideas instead filled in by her cutscene animations. And finally, I'd just like to emphasise how the visor is much more important in the Prime games, and the interface and interaction the visor has with the surroundings, such as scanning, rain droplets, steam fogging up your display, the reflection of Samus's eyes in the glass during darkness, and the digital interference when facing drones and ghosts, are all part of this new experience we go through that greatly enhances the atmosphere of our adventure. So, many things are carried over from Super Metroid into Metroid Fusion, such as turning animations and the rolling woodlouse ball, and aiming and everything. Although, she only has that one jumping animation regardless if she's firing or not. Except now we've got a new hanging animation, complete with respective sprite work for which side she hangs on. Perhaps the lack of her heavy armour has allowed her to be more light and nimble, which is why she needs a power-up to hang in earlier games. Who knows. Samus reacts to her gunfire now, 
and curiously enough, Samus holds her gun from beneath, unlike previously where it's been steadied from above. She kind of holds it more like a shotgun now. The actual run cycle speed is a little slower this time, resulting in more of a jog than a run, and Samus appears to be much more hunched over too. Her weight feels much heavier in this game compared to Super, something a lot of gamers pick up on and generally prefer. Maybe the gravity's different on the space station to the planets. It's probably more to do with the Game Boy Advance's screen size, but it greatly affects the gameplay, particularly as the somersault animation is quicker than Super's as well. What I find really curious about Fusion is that during the opening cutscene, we see Samus as she appears in Super Metroid, moving in a similar way, straight back, three frames of turning as opposed to two during gameplay. It's a curious little detail that they kept her faithful appearance and movement from Super in Fusion, and this goes for when you face the SAX as well. She retains that same run cycle, the green electric screw attack, the collapsing animation from Mother Brain. It's a really neat little crossover of visual ideas, which I don't think I've seen many places before, and it's really interesting they retained this here. It feels much less like this game is an interpretation of Samus's moves, more than this is literally how she moves without her suit after everything she's been through. By this time, Samus was in the second Smash Bros. game, Smash Bros. Melee. Movement is a little tighter than her N64 appearance, but the same notion applies that her movements are built around fighting game language than a tighter 2D platform experience and generally still seem to be based loosely around her floaty Super Metroid moves, although each subsequent Smash game would build upon her moves in the previous, evolving an almost separate style to her main games, but still holding true to the mechanical, nimble, confident character that's been built. Okay, so good Metroid things come in twos, I suppose. Uh, let's look at Metroid Prime 2 Echoes and Metroid Zero Mission. Prime 2 was largely the same as the first game, though we now have an additional third person view for the new screw attack upgrade in the Prime series, which was a combination of both the screw attack and traditional space jump from the 2D games. Nothing particularly of note other than she has a cool landing pose, especially with that clunky looking armour. And the screw attack itself has this kind of like fizzing effect, it's kind of cool. We're treated to more personality and character animation in her cutscene stuff as well. Her vulnerability when first in Dark Aether is one of the few times we see her in this vaguely uneasy state, and it heightens our own anticipation of what's to come. We also see a bit more compassion, and we see that famous hand wave as she casually saves another planet while wiping out another species with no bother. Something to note by this point is that both Metroid Prime Hunters and Echoes featured multiplayer and this meant you could see a full-bodied Samus running around in third person. Running was basically an extension of the small part we see when going into Morphle mode, but we see a lot more, such as reactions to being hit, and the fact her upper body can pivot and aim while moving in different directions. Zero Mission is a remake of the original Metroid, and while everything seems to be carried over from Fusion, stylistically, we can see Samus holds her gun much higher now, properly aiming, steadying it from above again. The hunch is back, but now it seems to make more visual sense with the higher gun aim, as though she's actually concentrating. Firing results in not only a kickback, but also this slight glow from the light of the gunshot itself, something which greatly adds to the effect of firing, I find. The run cycle is faster now, resulting in more of a determined run than a casual jog. The constant woodlouse ball returns, as does all the other good stuff from previously, like the smeary space jump. There's nothing much new going on, other than Samus has a whole new post-game sequence without her suit, resulting in her having to crawl instead of morph balling. We get some nice follow-through action with her ponytail as she moves. This whole section emphasises a more vulnerable Samus, with her having to move in a more cumbersome way than she's used to, racking the tension up much higher than usual. So has much changed come Metroid Prime 3, Corruption. Not particularly. I mean, motion controls are now a thing, 
and we're treated to more of Samus's left hand interacting with various tech, which is nice. It's a nice reminder that while she's this unstoppable walking tank, she still has this dainty little hand that has this really delicate precision in touching things. I like it. Though I'm not sold on that motion of her ripping stuff with the gravel beam. Looks a little laboured and unconvincing. The arc doesn't seem right and there doesn't seem to be any anticipation in with it. I, I don't know, I think it just could be better. We've got this sweet new animation for flipping up a ledge. Samus looking a bit more nimble here to what we're used to in Prime games. And of course, we're shown more character animation in the cutscenes, where we see her acting a little more nonchalant, like walking backwards before turning around, giving a thumbs up for wiping out another species and planet, you know, business as usual, and things like that which subtly build a bit more personality. Smash Brothers Brawl feels like more of the same from previous Smash games. Not a bad thing, obviously, but nothing seems to have transferred over from Smash into Mainline, and vice versa. Though we do see Zero Suit Samus, and can now see how much quicker she is without her actual suit weighing her down. Say what you like about Other M, and I have frequently, but something it did really well was give Samus really dynamic movement, of the likes we've not seen properly in her main games yet. Using a full 3D model like in her Smash appearances, we're now able to see Samus move at any angle meaning she has to look interesting and convincing whichever way she's facing. And man, the animation in this game is great. When standing, Samus still holds her gun and has her feet ready to push off, but she's not on tiptoes or having her gun sticking forward. She's got this kind of triangle shape going on, and ever so slightly brandishing her gun, pointing casually down. It's almost like she's too eager to aim, and she's keeping her gun down with her free hand. There's a general sense of excitement to her movements, timing feeling like it got a tight overhaul, and she feels much more acrobatic this time, which some people enjoy, and others think it's off the mark. But I think we've witnessed her movements throughout her history, demonstrating just how nimble and acrobatic she actually is, and this all feels correct in this game. Shooting gives this big kickback whichever angle she's aiming, reinforcing her triangle stance when standing. While stationary, Other M allows use of missiles, and while it's nothing like how Prime handles first person, seeing Samus pumping a gun like a shotgun to reload just feels great and much more satisfying. You get the general sense that she properly means business. Morphing now takes place kind of mid-air as she almost jumps into it, resulting in this new digital transformation. Curiously enough, they've removed the constantly spinning ball in favour for the Prime version of a rolling marble style, with trailing lights, and it's a nice marriage of both 3D and 2D ideas. Jumping doesn't look especially great when not viewed from the back, but somersaulting looks better in this case. They've nixed that after image effect from Zero Mission and applied it as a sort of distortion. Running is quicker again and feels powerful and you've got this kind of lean forward going on and the speed kind of matches the intensity of her moves like when she jumps and shoots and everything and the, it just feels right here. Shine sparking in this game using the speed booster looks particularly nice with this little spin, something carried over from Zero Mission and grappling at the grapple points has much more of an action film thing going on which I think works for this game. You can actually feel a bit of power in that pull, unlike how it felt in Prime 3. The space jump is missing the smeary effect when seen previously, instead covered up by the new screw attack effect, which, instead of an electrified Catherine wheel, looks more like a wispy fire, which I'm not so keen on. And again, like Zero Mission, we've got a Zero Suit Samus who moves basically the same as Suited Samus, although she has a sweet slide and all the usual other stuff like ponytail follow through and bits like that. Her Smash 4 appearance takes on the one from Other M, and while her moves are essentially the same as before, it all feels a lot tighter this time around, though I'm still not quite sold on her running, her flailing hand looks a bit daft, but looking at how much tighter everything is, it's making me realise that the gap between the two styles may be much less than it was, but we'll come back to this. Federation Force offers little in terms of anything new animation-wise, 
with gameplay, though for the first time Samus has been properly stylized away from her more serious and realistic depiction, something fans and gamers weren't quite on board with. Though we are still shown that she's nimble and acrobatic in her cutscene animations. And finally, Samus's most recent game, Samus Returns, opts for an other M approach, using a full 3D model and using more dynamic poses, particularly with the whole melee thing like other M did. An advantage that these two games have over the pixel art games is that the model rigging allows for a much more versatile depiction of Samus, such as being able to aim in any direction, though with Samus Returns you have precise control over where to aim other than auto-aim from other M. And shooting and firing missiles doesn't feel satisfying, I'll say that now. Her running and movement generally feels a little more cumbersome and sluggish than they have before. She seems to run more like she does in Fusion. Climbing up from hanging seems slower than usual, and when she falls, her pose looks like it's lacking any sort of energy or urgency. While she does still have kickback when firing, it just looks a little odd that it's just her upper body. Sure, she's strong enough to hold against the kickback, but even in other M, where it was mostly her upper body reacting, we still had slight movement from her legs to steady herself. To be fair, it might just be the limitations of the capabilities of the hardware, and maybe the rigging's a bit more complicated than that from moving in any direction and stuff like that. Something curious I noticed is that the space jump no longer has a cool smeary effect when in use, and instead literally has Samus somersaulting constantly, something that's reused from other M. I feel like this is a bit of a missed opportunity to do something visually interesting. And the screw attack kind of adds a more circular, harder edged laser effect to her somersault, much like how it appears in the Game Boy version, instead of a crazy electric Catherine wheel, but it's still better than the wispy fire effect from Other M. So, what have we learnt from this animation study? What could we expect from Metroid Prime 4 and other future Metroid games? And what sort of animation details would I suggest for future Metroid games? Samus is acrobatic, she's confident and powerful, she's nimble and streamlined while being rigid and strong, and she can steady herself from heavy moves, and while she's a human who has to move in restrictive human ways, she's also a mechanical hero and capable of inhuman feats. She's also compassionate, modest and strong-willed. So where will Metroid Prime 4 go? Perhaps the mechanical nature of her armoury will return from previously? We'll certainly see the missile hatch open, and I hope we'll see beam arrangements return, and hopefully something new and not the same old three beams from before. Seeing as Nintendo are still rocking the side-scrolling stuff, what's to say they won't do another crossover of styles and do an other M approach, but more like GTA V with a swappable view style? This could lead to some interesting body animation in third person. It could be something like Mega Man Legends, perhaps. Let's just take a quick look at this fan game by Tuxedo Pato, using his tweeted video. I mean, just look at some of the awesome stuff going on here. We've got this neat little dash, with a proper stretch and that cool little blast from her back jets. I love how the aim is independent from movement, so you can run and dash while shooting. I like this lean during the run, and man, I love that speed booster. I'm a big fan of that glowing effect, kind of replacing the after image. What I really like here though, is how she jumps into the morph ball while running, keeping that momentum. I like how she lands on her shoulder pads, it really looks like she dives into the move and her shoulders close in around her to form the morph ball, which to be fair is what I've always thought happened anyway, especially after Prime. Just generally, the construction of Samus in this fan game, I would wholeheartedly get behind and support. She definitely feels confident and powerful. So, what other things could we see? It's possible we'll see the digital transformation from Other M, but we'll certainly see the static, marble-styled morph ball in the next game, seeing as it's been that way since Other M. Would you prefer a laser-edged screw attack? a crazy electric one, or a wispy fiery one for the next game. One thing I'd like for games to maybe explore a bit more is the morphful bomb. 
So far, all games have had it merely appear out of nothing. The Prime games showed us a much more mechanical understanding of her suit. It might be interesting to explore perhaps how bombs are deployed. Maybe it's a simple, quick digital production, kind of like how other M portrayed her suit changes. Breath of the Wild introduced this beautiful 2D styled effects animation. I think something like this for some future Metroid games could look really nice. Imagine seeing a bomb or a power bomb go off like that. That'd be cool. And Super Smash Bros. Ultimate has this similar sort of idea going on. I think there could be potential to see some real nice 2D styled effects stuff in a Metroid game, 3D and 2D. I mean, if we look at uh, Rob's animations, like some of these smears, I mean, that could look really cool for a future space jump in a Metroid game. I think I'd like all versions of future games, both 3D and 2D, to continue using the mechanical gun animations, perhaps glowing different colours depending on which beam stack is equipped, like Samus Returns, and definitely make that missile hatch feel satisfying to fire from. Maybe we could draw inspiration from Smash Bros to potentially bring across into future mainline games. Her barge attack could perhaps work in a new speed boost animation. Perhaps it can be used when hitting boost blocks or running through enemies. Or perhaps there could be a designated run button again, mapped just for speed boosting or barging. There could be a cool transition from run to sprint and back again. This could well work in a 2D platformer or first person. I mean, imagine some dynamic sprinting animation in first person, only being able to shoot in a rough direction while you run. I think we could explore how her suit could weigh her down, such as having a wind down animation from a sprint or a run. Heck, maybe even bring back the walking animation from Other M for spookier moments, such as having to creep through an alarmed area filled with monsters or something and I think there could be more opportunity for a bit more character animation in cutscenes, especially in 2D games where it's not often shown. Maybe give her an idle animation, which changes depending on what sort of area she's in, whether it's a new area, allowing her to curiously look around, maybe suddenly use her scan visor, or if it's a dark area, we can see her act a bit more cautiously. Not strictly animation of Samus directly, but we should continue to see environmental disturbances to her presence, such as those splashes in wet areas or dust clouds in hot, dry areas. Maybe even bring something over from the Prime games. Maybe have some shimmering heat rise off her suit in hot areas or being able to see droplets roll off her suit in humid areas. Or bring back the breathing animation from Super Metroid. Was that in Fusion? Can't remember. And I think definitely have her lean forward loads when speed boosting, have her react when firing her cannonball, and have some cool muzzle flashes. Definitely continue the mechanical side of her suit, perhaps give her shoulder pads more of a purpose in forming the morph ball, even if it's a few frames. And I think, most importantly, continue to emphasise her versatility and acrobatics, show how strong she is with the things she can do in her suit and the speed in which she can do them. Give her more of a follow-up when landing from a greater height than normal. Perhaps give her more knockback when firing a super missile, so she has to steady herself by taking a step further back. All in all, I think Nintendo should keep stylistically pushing the limitations in what Samus can realistically do, and just keep making it exciting. Let me know what you think Samus could do in the future games. Wow, that was a big one, and it took a long old while to make, something which isn't easy to do around a career and family. If you want to support me in making these videos, please have a look at my Patreon, and consider supporting the channel to help produce these videos. See you again soon. Love you, bye.